After releasing my Tynan Dalbra guard passing study a few weeks ago, a lot of people let me know in the comment section that they wanted more on him, which I was glad to see. And although many more studies of him will be on the way, before I jump right back into it, I decided to give myself a break from his game to study Cade and Tai Ru Tolo, who are fresh off some incredible performances at ADCC 2022. Literally as I began working on this video, Cade won his 1FC match with ease against Sambo World Champion Wally Korshev. And coincidentally, in his post-match interview, he called out Tynan Dalbra, which is a match I, and in case you didn't know, you would also love to see. Not just because two of the most exciting submission grapplers would be going at it, but because we've never seen Tynan fight without the gi in competition. So I'm really curious to see how his gi game would transition over. But anyways, I've been studying the Rutolo Brothers leg pin passing DVD for a few months now. So I figured I'd make a study on that specifically. But as I begin to look at their passing game, I found so much more that I wanted to dive into. So I'm going to approach this analysis the same way I did in a Tynan study and give more of an overview. And in future videos, I'll dive more into specifics. In today's day and age, guards have become so complex in both Nogi and in the Gi. Every other day, there's a new guard or leg lock to look out for. The laser guard, the Z-lock, the fishnet, the matrix, the octopus, glover's ball. Wait, wait, what? Uh, yeah. So why deal with all that if you can avoid or at least make it difficult for the guard player to tangle you up by utilizing a far distance approach and primarily passing around the legs? Don't get me wrong, the Rutolos will occasionally hit you with a power knee cut to switch things up, but generally they'll engage and continually circle on the outside. And for this passing style, they've developed a whole system. My first introduction to any variation of leg pin passing was nearly 9 years ago when Keenan Cornelius used a leg stomp to pass the nearly impenetrable guard of Paolo Miao. Man that was a crazy moment and I'm pretty sure his guard hasn't been passed ever since. So although leg pin passing is nothing new and has been around way before the Rutolos, we've really seen them popularize and develop it with such an overwhelming degree of success. I feel like for myself, there seems to be moments when I see a move being hit and I go, wow, I need to learn that ASAP. In this case, it was when Ty fought Levi Jones at the 2022 IBJJF World Championships and repeatedly used a leg pin to put Levi in danger, passing his elite guard twice. The reason why it's so effective is because by pinning the leg to the mat, you only have to focus on one other leg now. And the beauty of this type of passing is that once pinned, Unlike the guard player, as the passer your options aren't limited. Depending on the reaction the guard player gives you, you'll be presented with opportunities to go for passes and submissions like the knee cut, leg drag, darse, and so much more. Keep your leg on the outside, knee cut. Okay, let's try inside, leg drag. Alright, you know what, I'm just gonna sit up darse. And since the foot remains pinned to the leg as long as possible while entering a pass or submission, Finishing becomes much easier. For example, when going for an Estima lock, maintaining the leg pin makes it difficult for the guard player to spin out. Or when going for a knee cut, by the time the leg pin is released, it's too late for them to attempt to use their bottom leg to retain the guard. Now, even though I've presented a bunch of options available from the leg pin, I haven't mentioned the Rutolo's primary option from this position. An option frequently stemming from the leg pin position or just entered when circling around the guard is the reverse Toriando pass. Honestly, I wasn't sure what to call this kind of pass and grip they do. A Toriando? Eh, kinda. It's more like a Toriando, but backwards. So the reverse Toriando, it came to be. Well, at least it makes sense in my head. Kaden Tai used this pass to walk around the guard and use their long lanky arms to create needed chest separation and flatten the opponent's hips in hopes of diving into north-south. To defend this, the guard player has to use a lot of core strength, their hip flexors, and energy to try and close the gap, while the passer just simply uses gravity to their advantage. And this obviously takes its toll as seen in Kade's Who's Number 1 match against Diego Pato, where he eventually broke him unable to continue to fight from such a disadvantageous position. To help prevent the Rutolos from passing from north-south, P. 
people have to rely heavily on framing them away with their arms to the hips or upper body. But the rule totals don't mind the frames because they have answers for it. Against Lackland Giles at ADCC was a perfect example of how framing can put the guard player in serious trouble. Because Lackland's arm was exposed and overextended, it left the opportunity for K to go for the armbar and use leg chops to disorient Lackland. Just kidding Cade, we know those are unintentional. And the same goes against Gabriel Souza, but instead this time Gabriel was able to avoid the armbar and turtle up, but left the darts open. Which brings me to my next point. For most BJJ enthusiasts, when they think of the Rutolo brothers, the first submission that comes to mind is the darts choke. A nasty submission they've mastered that's more often a brutal neck crank than it is a choke. And they aren't just limited to hitting it from the leg pin or north south. They can hit it from nearly anywhere. With their long lanky arms, they can snag it off the knee cut when the opponent's turtled, off scrambles in mid air, essentially any time they can isolate your head and arm, it's available. So best be careful with leaving your arm overexposed when framing because they will die for it. Before I get into my favorite part of the Rutolo's passing game, I'd like to mention that the brothers do have DVDs on leg pin passing, the darts choke, and counter leg locks available on BJJ Fanatics. So if you'd like to see more specifics on these techniques, you can do the referral link in the comment section and description below. Or even feel free to peruse around and check out instructionals such as Gordon Ryan systematically attacking the guard, John Donaher's Enter the System series, or even Glover's Balls if that piqued your interest. There's always daily deals and discounts available. And of course, I do get a percentage of commission from any sale. I really enjoy making these videos, but they are definitely time consuming. So thank you in advance if you do purchase anything through me, or even if you just drop a like. It's sincerely deeply appreciated. Remember how I said Cade and Ty primarily pass on the outside to go around the guard and avoid entanglements? Well, inevitably there's moments where their opponent manages to tie up their legs and hunt the leg lock. And for this reason, they develop an extremely effective counter to both straight and cross Ashigurami entries. The concept behind their bolo back take counter is generally to free the knee line by stuffing or opening the opponent's leg entanglement. Then depending on the opponent's type of entry, either using momentum to drop or roll through, and chop down with their legs which act as a lever to elevate the hips and expose the back for the back take. Off the inside Senkaku, inside Ashi, 50-50, and outside Ashi, once the knee line is free, the back take is there. And the scary part is, is that they even welcome the leg entanglement at times, which we saw when Cade kept trying to bait Lackland but Lackland was very careful and well aware of the threat. Now the brothers have definitely earned much more recognition for their ability to counter rather than utilize leg locks themselves. But something I feel that is worth touching on is Kay's and Ty's recent success with leg locks of their own coming off of the pass. I mean there was that time Ty hit that nasty knee bar off the pass on Paulo Miel at ADCC 2019. But this year they've really shined. At who's number one in January? Ty beautifully countered Levi's matrix position and pulled his knee line through to sit back for the heel hook attempt, soon after hitting a knee bar heel hook variation. And then there was Cade's record setting performance at ADCC in September, where 2 out of 4 submissions also came from heel hooks off the pass. A wild scramble with Roberto Jimenez resulting in an inside heel hook from a really cool leg lay setup. And in the finals, catching Mika's overexposed leg weave with another inside heel hook. This evolving part of their game is something that I'll be sure to keep more of an eye out for. Now we're near the end of the video and I thought this would be the perfect way to tie everything together. To this point, I've spoken a lot about the technical and strategic aspects of the Rutolo brothers passing game, but a huge key to their success is the intangibles they bring to the table namely their unorthodox style and relentless nature. Attributes that can't really be replicated. Between their leg pin system, north-south passing, and back take counters off the leg lock, it's difficult for their opponents to prepare and adjust for such an uncanny style. And to make matters worse, their jujitsu is relentless, not only seeking, but thriving in chaos, all while having a never-ending gas tank. 
and when you combine such an uncanny style with a relentless mindset, you get twins who are able to create the wildest of scraps while being able to quickly react and capitalize when given the opportunity. If you made it this far, thank you for watching till the end. Feel free to let me know in the comment section or DM me on my other social media accounts if you have any video suggestions, thoughts, or questions. I'm always happy to respond and interact with you all. Have a nice day and don't forget to be nice to that white belt at your gym. White belt lives matter too.